Helpful Watercolor Tips and Tricks Lesson 5 How to make specific watercolor mix and in this lesson watercolor mixing for a tomato. For this lesson we will need watercolors paper and color palette and the subject which is this beautiful red tomato. When I pick up a subject I ask myself which color it is and we can see clearly that this tomato is red but there are also a lot of yellow. We can see in the base of this subject there is red with some yellow. So I'm starting with lemon yellow and adding a little bit of Indian yellow on the side for more vibrant yellow color tones if I will be needing that. And for this beautiful red pigment I'm taking Sennelier Red for the second mix, adding very small amount of alizarin crimson. It's more a little bit cooler color mix for the half tones. Then I see the area which is very close to that shiny part and that is where the cooler color starts to appear. Manganese violet for the third mix a little amount very transparent amount of manganese violet and a little touch of senelier red. This will be transition from the warmer area to more cooler area which is in the light. Now the darker area, those beautiful fo folds on this tomato, they are quite dark and saturated. For that color I'm taking Perlene Maroon. Very beautiful saturated dark color but that we will be using a little bit later and also adding a little bit of Sennelier Red to make it more friendlier with the rest of the watercolor mixes. Now for the green part. For the green part I'm taking Sab Green. There, it's also a very yellowish green color pigment. Adding a little bit of ultramarine blue because green parts of the tomato are slightly cooler and and parallel green for darker areas. And what about those beautiful light spots? In the reference photo I can see that there are some blue color notions but very very transparent. I also I added a little bit too much so I'm diluting it with water and that will be painted at the very last finishing layers. So again, which pigments I t took for this tomato? Lemon yellow, Indian yellow, Senelia red, which will be the most used pigment here, Alizarin crimson, Perlin maroon, for those darker folds, darker areas, shadow area, manganese violet and manganese blue. For the green parts, sap green, ultramarine blue and perlin green for darker areas. We have all color mixes and ready to start painting the first layer. An outline is done and the reference with line drawing is available for download. With an elastic eraser I'm removing the excess amount of graphite of the paper so I don't have any dark and unnecessary graphite marks visible through watercolor layers. This is the size of my painting. Be sure that your water is clean after mixing watercolors. I use two water glasses, one for 
cleaning my brush and the other one for applying clean water layers. Let's start painting the first layer for this tomato painting. I'm using round synthetic brush and starting with one section at a time. We can see in reference that there are very visible sections between those beautiful curves. Applying water, just enough for watercolors to be moved where we need them. If the watercolors are floating by themselves around your surface, it means you're using too much water. If I will lift the paper, nothing will be dripping off the paper. And I'm starting with Sennelier Red, looking in reference, checking where is the most red color in this tomato. Spreading watercolors with round synthetic brush, very transparent. First layer is going to be very transparent, very thin. Taking manganese violet with a little touch of Sennelier Red and adding this layer to the lightest parts that we see, also going over the shiny areas of the surface of the tomato. I will not be using any white color, not any masking fluid, everything will be done with the brush. I will show you how I will make those areas much lighter. For now I'm spreading watercolors and leaving lighter parts much wider than they appear in the reference. In order I have room where to apply layers of watercolors, layers of transparent watercolors and build the volume gradually. Now I have my clean water, I dip my brush in water, wipe it in a paper towel and lift the shiny areas that we see in the reference. Again in water, clean it in paper towel and lift the watercolor from the paper. You can see that the light area starts to appear. We don't need any white color. Nothing can be whiter than the paper itself. No watercolor white pigment will help us. Only paper is the whitest white in watercolor painting. Repeating this process again and again while we are satisfied with the whiteness of those shiny areas because those shiny areas are really white. We need to keep that, those areas really wide and I'm making that area much wider. Again, I'm repeating myself that I'm leaving the light much more than it looks in a reference. It's very important in order to build gradually volume, to make it more realistic and to not lose the lightest parts. It is so easy painting, adding layers to lose light in watercolor painting. Watercolor is very transparent and light medium and we need to keep this lightness. Even with the dark saturated subject, this tomato is quite dark, but we need to keep that light there. My watercolor mixes are not saturated, they're really transparent and the first layer is super transparent, super light. Nothing is Nothing seems like the reference at this moment. I'm placing tonal values in places, I'm leaving light area, some notions of the shadow area, just a small amount. Moving forward with the same brush, round synthetic brush, going to the next section, leaving light, adding dark, a slightly darker Sennelier Red to the shadow area and manganese violet with Sennelier Red Mix to the lightest parts. And again, with a clean and dry brush, I'm lifting and reserving space for the shiny areas. While the surface is wet, slightly moist, it's very easy to lift watercolors from the paper. Taking Sennelier Red and adding a little bit more where I can see in a reference there is a slightly darker area. Constantly checking reference, constantly looking in the reference. I'm not painting from my mind, I'm not assuming something, 
I have all information in the reference. Spreading watercolors, moving with synthetic brush, wiping if we need something, smoothing the applied layer also with clean and dry brush, painting one section at a time so I keep the moisture on the painting area. Moving forward to the next section, again doing the same clean water applying to the surface with round synthetic brush, just enough for watercolors to be moved where we need them. Be careful with outer edges, don't go over the edges, you can even leave a few millimeters off the edges and then when you are pushing and moving watercolors you can go till the edge line. Again, starting with Sanalia Red, checking reference, I'm constantly looking, I'm putting the link for the reference, open it right beside the tutorial, zoom the section you are painting. I'm not placing references in my tutorials because we, I'm more into really, really detailing and you can't in a tutorial see the details from that little square of the reference, I always suggest open it right beside you on the other gadget. On If you are using the computer you can open it in the other window and have, have it very enlarged, zoom the section you are painting, pause the video, look at the sections that I'm painting, do you see what I see, what I'm telling you, where's the lighter parts, where's the darker parts. Also apply manganese violet with senalia red to the lighter parts. Lighter parts are much bigger and wider as they appear in reference, lifting the lightest shiny area of the paper with clean and dry brush. On the lower part of the tomato we have a reflected light area, adding a little bit more Senalia Red to the darker part, to the shadow area. We see in the reference that this area is slightly darker, but everything is still quite transparent. further to the next section, adding water and this area I notice that there are more yellowish color with, together with Senalia Red, so I'm adding lemon yellow and a little amount of Indian yellow together with Senalia Red. This middle part is much warmer I can see there more yellow color but still will be layering and applying layers more and more. I will make this uh, for this tomato a whole tutorial. Here I'm talking only about watercolor mixes and first layer and lifting but also the tutorial will be available a little bit later for the whole process of painting this tomato. But the middle part, I can see it's much warmer. There are also lighter parts, which are manganese violet and senalia red. And also shiny areas, which we are lifting with clean and dry brush.
Now last section for the first layer of this tomato. Also a little bit more yellow color. Senelia red. The middle part, the bigger curve, we see it's very, very dark and saturated. But we are not even close achieving the darkness that we have in reference. That is not the point to get in the first or second layer, the look that we have in reference. I know that many beginners are so confused, after a few layers, nothing looks like a reference. This is watercolor painting and this is normal. We are painting gradually, we are building saturation and vibrancy of the subjects gradually. If we will go straight with very dark and saturated watercolor mixes, we will end up with dark and flat looking painting. We don't need that, we need light, we need um, realistic look of the subjects that we are painting. some more or shiny area and finishing the first layer for this tomato painting. As I mentioned lighter parts are much wider in order to keep light in this painting. I will be adding more and more layers to get the vibrancy and darkness of this beautiful tomato Thank you for watching and hope you learned something new. See you in my next tutorials. Bye bye.